Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a NVMe to PCI Express adapter, which doesn't cost a fortune, is extremely easy to use, and ticks pretty much most of the boxes I could personally want. But is it going to be the right one for you? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at a NVMe to PCI Express adapter. This is from a company called Glow Trends. Yep, never heard of them myself either until today. This is actually a really decent little kit. Now, there's loads and loads of PCI Express adapters on the market, especially if you look on Amazon, AliExpress, etc., etc. And they all have their pros and their cons. But of all the ones I've seen and all the ones I've used, this one ticks pretty much every box that I could possibly want, except one minor niggle, which we'll take a look at a little bit later on. But I think this is actually really good value for money. And if you're looking at putting an additional NVMe drive into your PC, this is definitely worth a look. So let's do a quick unboxing, go through the pros and cons, take a look at some speed results, and then we'll wrap up with my final thoughts. So to start off with, the part number of this one is the PA09-HS. Not a particularly sexy name, but nonetheless, if you want to find one, that's how you find it on Amazon. Also, there will be affiliated links in the video description so you can check out for yourselves in your various countries. And it does appear to be available pretty much everywhere at a fantastic price, so that's always a plus. Now, looking inside the kit, there's a, a whole bunch of things we get in here. This is designed essentially to make it as simple as possible for pretty much anyone, whether you're a complete novice or whether you're a, um, well, slightly more professional. So first of all, let's take a look. We get the accessories bag there, which we'll take a closer look at later. There's an included tiny little screwdriver, which is uh, always a welcome addition. There is a half height PCI Express adapter. So if you're using this in maybe one of those small PCs, maybe a Dell or some kind of pre-built, or just a small form factor PC in general, you can use this half height card to install this in your PC. Also, it comes with a bunch of paperwork telling you about the model number, what it's all about. And on the back, there are some speed tests and installation guide. And there is a thank you from the company for actually buying their product. Also, there's a tiny little bag with a couple of additional screws in there for mounting it into your PC. And last of all, we get the card itself. So taking the card out of the anti-static packaging, you can see there is nothing particularly uh, fantastic about this, but certainly it's going to do the job. So as you can see, this has got the PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 slot on here, which can be backward compatible, PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 should you wish to. Pretty nice design, black PCB should fit into the design of most PCs. I would have liked to have seen the backplate in maybe a black type finish. Uh, the metal finish isn't brilliant and it will stand out a little bit in certain builds, but certainly one thing they have done right, in my opinion, is this honeycomb type mesh on the back, which is gonna aid airflow. And that is the same on the smaller half height version as well, which is easy to swap out by just removing the two screws there and swapping that out. Looking at the card itself, again, nothing particularly special here. We do have a couple of features on here, such as there is a LED light on there, which will give you an idea of drive activity. Again, for some people that may be a little bit distracting if you've got it in a PC and it's on show, having that light flashing away may be a little bit distracting, but you can always put a little bit of black tape over it should you wish to. On the end there, we've got our PCI Express M.2 connection. So this is only suitable for NVMe based PCI Express drives. This isn't compatible with the older M.2 SATA type drives. So do bear that in mind. As you can see from the layout, this is compatible with 2280 drives as a maximum, 2260, 2242, and also 2230 size drives. If you do want to change the size, all you need to do, there is an additional mounting pillar on this end section. And also there's a screw already pre-attached in there. So it's just a matter of unscrewing that, putting it into the individual place where you want the drive to actually be located. So very simple, very straightforward. So next we'll take a look at the accessories bag. So in the accessories bag, there again is a product video show. So it shows you how to install it, all that kind of stuff, which is uh, quite handy. And also there is the actual M.2 cooling mechanism or mount or heat sink or whatever you want to call it. It's not a particularly big one, which in some ways is uh, possibly beneficial because it's easy to install and there is no pre-attached pads on there, so that does come separately. The pad itself is included, so that is a double-sided. All you do is peel that off and attach it to the drive and then put this on the top. We'll show you how that works a little bit later on. Nice little feature, actually, two little metal clips. Now, these metal clips you can choose to use or not, entirely up to the individual, and these essentially will wrap around the drive itself and also onto the heatsink to keep everything held in place. I'll try and give you some cutaway to that so you can see what it actually looks like in practice. 
One of the best features of this, which actually is something which is so simple, but I'm surprised a lot of other manufacturers have overlooked it, is the fact that we have three silicon bands. So for certain drives, depending on their characteristics, maybe you've got RAM on both sides of the drive and you need to put a thermal pad on both sides, in which case with this one, you may need to cut it in half, that kind of thing, or perhaps get another pad. I'll put some links for M.2 thermal pads in the description as well below so you can check those out should you need them. But the whole point of these rubber bands are the fact that it will go around the heatsink itself and the drive and as many thermal pads as you actually need, which a lot of other drive manufacturers, or at least M.2 cars that I've seen, generally they come with screws to attach the heatsink to the actual device, which means that you're limited by the length of the screws, whether they're short, long, whatever. It is gonna be slightly limiting, but with this kind of mechanism or mounting section, you can put in there as thick a drive as you want. So if your drive for some reason actually already has some kind of metal plate or an additional little bit of a thermal pad on there, then it's gonna be absolutely no problem at all. Another nice inclusion, which uh, may or may not be necessary, there's a set of wipes there. So there's a wet and a dry. So this is for cleaning up your drive prior to actually putting the thermal pad on to remove any traces of grease, etc. Okay, so the next part is to actually install a drive on here. So I'm gonna use one of our silicon power drives, which is a nice and simple one to do. So the first thing to do is to obviously work out what size drive it is. This is a 2280. So we can actually leave this in position here. I will actually remove the screw from the end. They do include a screwdriver, but it's not particularly magnetic. And actually the screw they've used in this section itself isn't overly magnetic. So yeah, you may need to uh, use a different screwdriver of which we have done reviews on. So you can check those out should you wish to. So let's prepare the drive. So we're gonna have to remove the backing from both sides of this little pad. And then we're gonna put the thermal pad onto the drive. Now, try and get it towards the end there, normally going over any sticker which is on the existing drive. Avoid being too close to the pins and also avoid being too close to the mounting mechanism on the end. Somewhere there is absolutely fine. So the next part is to grab the heat sink and literally all we need to do, place it on top. And that is essentially it. Again, same sort of deal. So try to avoid covering the, uh, the pins on the end and also avoiding the bit on the rear because obviously that is where you're gonna need to put a screw through. So at this point now you can choose if you want to, you can use the metal clips. So just get one in position on one side and literally just snap it around and that snaps it into place. If you don't want to use the clips, you can just use the rubber bands on their own. So just stretch the band. Put the band into place and then put it where you want. Now for extra security, obviously you can do a combination of the bands and the clips. Again, that is the beauty of this kit. It's extremely flexible, like the bands, pun intended and just put those on, stretch it round. And again, just slide them into place. Last of all, we can put the last clip on. And that just clips around the outside edge. So there you can see that heat sink now is very, very well attached. And if we're looking through the side, you can see the pad there, etc. Again, if you don't want to, you can take those metal clips off. If you've got a drive, which unlike this one, actually has additional mounted components on here, I would probably advise against using the metal brackets just in case they short out with anything. Again, if you're not too sure, you can just pull those off and just use it with bands, which is absolutely fine. These are silicon-based bands, so they're gonna be resistant to high temperatures. Although obviously the drive, having a heatsink on it is designed to reduce the temperatures. And that is essentially what it's meant to do. So the next thing to do is to actually put the drive into the unit. So we're gonna line up the pins there at the end. Sorry, it's a bit difficult to do from this angle. So about a 45 degree angle. And then all we need to do is push this bit down in the end and then put the screw back in. And just do it so it holds the drive in place. It doesn't have to be too tight, just so it's secure in the drive. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Now the whole point of actually having one of these heat sinks on a drive is to reduce temperatures. So let's head over to the computer now and we'll do some speed tests 
and check out the temperatures and see what it's actually like in use. So that's all done. Uh, I've actually taken it back out again. We've done the testing. Actually, I've done it a few days apart. So uh, you probably notice I've got a coat in. I probably didn't in the other bit, or maybe I did. I can't remember. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, really simple to do. Fits inside the PC extremely easily. You will need a PCI Express slot, which is at least a times four slot in size. Now you can use a times four, a times eight, or a times 16 slot on your motherboard. But unfortunately, you cannot use a PCI Express times one slot, uh, primarily because you won't get the data through. You'll get power, but no data. So that's uh, not something you can do. So you may have to look at your motherboard just to make sure you've got an additional slot available. In terms of speed, uh, it actually does very, very well, especially considering what drive it is. So you'll see the results on the screen now. So this is the results with the actual drive itself installed, but without the heat sink on there. And you can get an idea of the data throughput and the temperatures, which actually did start to get a little bit out of control. Whereas on the second, you can see now we've got a, a very slight bump in performance in terms of throughput. And also obviously we've got a reduction in temperatures, which is uh, obviously a good thing in general. NVMe drives do actually like to be slightly warm. So there's a very kind of a uh, Goldilocks zone. So you don't want them to run too cold. You definitely don't want them to run too hot because they'll start throttling. So you want them to get to a point where they don't get any hotter than is kind of like the sweet spot which is normally somewhere in the region of around about 50 degrees, maybe a little bit less. Again, depending on the throughput you're putting on the drive and what you're doing, if you're using this for huge transfers, then the drive is gonna keep hot and sustain that heat, hence why having a heat sink on there is good. In actual fact, the heat sink on there, even though it is actually quite small, did do almost as well as the Frozzer heat sink on my MSI motherboard, which actually is a huge chunk of metal. So I think this is actually done particularly well. I think it is partially aided by a little bit of airflow coming in through the PCI Express blanking plate on the back there. Having that open is a good thing. Obviously, if you're in a really dusty environment, that potentially could be harmful and pull dust actually into the computer, but it's very easy to remedy. All you'll need to do is to put a little bit of tape across the back there and that will seal it off should you need to. But overall, I think for the price, which we haven't actually discussed yet at the moment on Amazon.co.uk, this retails for $12.99 which I think is a bargain for what it adds, the flexibility, you can use pretty much any drive you want on here, obviously, as long as it is an NVMe style drive, not an M.2 SATA. But yeah, keeps it cool, gives you another port, does what it does and doesn't cost a fortune. So for me, definitely a winner. But it's not up to me, it's up to you. So let us know what you think about this one in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.